Today is finally the day. The drone that I purchased for my farm is right here. I'm gonna have a little bit of training, gonna get everything set up so this summer I'm ready to spray. Here is the drone, the XAG P150 that I bought from Daniel right here. He's bringing out all of our boxes, all my chargers, all my batteries, everything. They're gonna give me a little bit of crash course, make sure I feel comfortable on everything going on with the drone by day's end. That way it's ready for me to fly. Hopefully the course does not include any crashing. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> the batteries. The batteries. The charger is 240 volts. Yeah. I want thing, Daniel, you gotta show. You gotta show your custom printed. <laughs> so Daniel has a 3D printer, right? Yep, yep. And he custom printed this little handle on here. Show the 1-7. 1-7, and then this one's 1-8 on this handle. That way, apparently with these XAG drones, right, the yeah. handles break pretty often, so they now I shouldn't have any problems. Little plastic clips that can, when you're lifting them up, they can break off right on them. And so, now you can actually get your whole hand underneath them and actually hold them. Super nice, super cool. Plus, now I have them all numbered, so that way I can keep track if one of them's slowly starting to lose charge faster. I just have it referenced because it, they're all numbered. So this, this is the cooling box for the battery. So the charger will connect to the cooling box like this. Yep. And it actually powers the box through those screws. Oh, so that's gonna power the box, to power this little fan to yep. keep the battery cool? Yep, gotcha. and then uh, you'll just put clean water in here. It'll last about six hours. Six hours? And then you'll have to put a little bit, a bit more water in it. Gotcha. Yep. You like all of them out? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'll eventually move them all somewhere else or put them on something. Put them on your new trailer. Yeah, that's still coming. That's still figuring out too. <laughs> should I secure all this stuff to the trailer then? When it is that kind of so what people these, should do? I just run a screw through this okay. part of it right there, and then I also put a screw there and there. Okay, just to keep just it to secure. keep it from going anywhere. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Seems like I got a lot of batteries. That should do it for you. Yeah, looks like a lot. That's one thing you don't want to be short on. There's batteries, yeah, it's true. Here you go. The controller. The drone pilot. Officially mine. Even has my name on it. Daniel, you custom make this too or no? I, I did. <laughs> I, that's a fancy, that, that worked real hard on that. Has this drone, did you test fly it or no? Yeah. Oh, you did, okay. Yeah. So I won't be the first, but I'll be the second to fly. I mean, I just flew it a little bit, but. Yeah. I think we should bring it out and we'll get it turned on and all set up and set up a little field out there. And yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, just do a demo thing. Yeah. So everything inside these boxes just came out to, we got all of our batteries here. We have a total of eight, so four different sets. We have three cooling stations. That way we can charge all the batteries that aren't gonna be in the drone, and then the controller and all the plugs. So. We're getting everything set up right outside. Satisfying, kind of. And then just push and hold the power push button. And hold. Push and hold again until it. Oh, there it goes. Got yep. It. Turn that one on. And the drone's gonna flash the blue lights on the arms a little bit. Once that's done, it's booted up and ready to fly. Here we go. First flight for me on my new drone. It's just uploading the route and then it'll beep and the drone will take off. There's the passes we're making on the little field we got all mapped out. Does it say how long it's gonna take somewhere? Five percent that we're done. It doesn't say, it doesn't say how like, long it's gonna take. Okay. It tells you here, you know, your accumulated and total acres. Gotcha. What? No, what, about, what do you do when this thing's flying? Get a lawn chair. No, like honestly. <laughs> no, you're thinking about your batteries. Like, okay, are my batteries all on the chargers? Is everything working? Is my chem? When am I gonna need to mix chemical, chemical? next? Okay. Yeah. You know. But I mean, are you actively watching this controller the whole time it's flying? Or are you just like setting this down? You want to be aware of what's going on, but you don't have to actually, you know, constantly watch it. But you want to be aware of what's yeah. what's going on. So now when it comes back. Like, would you be comfortable letting it land or like oh, yeah. have the controller? Yep. yep, if the drone has RTK, it's gonna land within like a couple inches okay. of where it is. Now 
another question now. So when I gotta switch batteries, do I have to shut like one at a time, or can I go pull, pull them right out, and then you can set the new ones right into it? But do you have to shut them off? Nope, mm -hmm. they'll no, automatically turn off. off. Okay. What's nice also on this is how fast those props turn down, so that um, and turn off, so that you can get up here filling right away before you. Um, so do you have like what do you do first? Do you start filling? Or I put I put my fuel nozzle in to start filling, then I swap batteries because the tank normally takes longer to fill than yeah. pulling batteries. The guys from Tenacity Ag just pulled out of the yard. They're here about two, two and a half hours. We talked a lot about going through all the different settings, all the adjustments we can make on the controller. In addition to all the things I need to be aware of on the drone. Here is the controller for the drone. The thing I learned about this controller, which here you can see the field that we mapped, but this is essentially an Android phone. If I slide up like this, this phone has you know different settings, camera roll, files, all of which, and then this XAG app, which I use to manage everything in relation to the drone. On the actual controller here itself, we went through all the different settings to set up and plan an operation of a field. So because we don't have any water in the tank right now, we didn't actually spray any water, but you can adjust the droplet si size and the total gallons per acre, in addition to the speed and the height of which we were flying and went through basically this other one is approaching route so instead of always going into a field just wherever the drone is parked right into a field you can set up if you want to go around an obstacle and in so we're just playing around with different metrics in here on the actual drone side of things we talked about basic hardware basic upkeep on it basically keep the props as clean as possible that way it doesn't cause any draft so i'm going to be washing power washing this off every night in addition to running some clean water through the tank and through the atomizers every day. And here are my atomizers. This is where the actual chemical will come out. And this little spinning disc here, that will be spinning at a different rate depending on how big of water droplets that I want to come out of it. The tank just has this simple lid, which I plan on getting a fuel hose. That way it'll automatically fill up this and stop it. Holds, I believe, 17 gallons. And then the two batteries, obviously this is a dual battery system. One thing nice about this one, you turn one battery on, the other battery automatically turns on, plus these awesome 3D printed handles that I really, really like and are very durable. As exciting as it is, I'm also a little bit nervous because there is a lot I need to learn on the controller side of things, a lot I need to learn on the drone side of things because this is year one for my drone for our farm and for my custom application business, but I feel a little bit at peace because before they left, Daniel and Devin at Tenacity Egg, they said, Matthias, any questions at all, don't be afraid to give us a call, even if it's the simplest thing of trying to learn and remember how to get this hooked back up to the drone. So that makes me feel a lot better. Since they have left for the day and they were here when I ran flight operation number one, now I wanna try flight operation number one by myself. So we're gonna slide the old slider here and hopefully the drone takes off because that shows they were good teachers and I was a good student. Well, this is not the start we wanted. It says UAS ID not set, contact your local dealer. So I guess we'll put Daniel to the test. We'll give him a call and see if he can fix this problem over the phone. Is it yellow on the bottom? Uh, no, it's green. Yeah, so just put Matthias or high tech or okay. um, something like that. Somehow what happened there is we lost connection between the controller and the remote. We lost the serial number, but now I think we got it after talking to Daniel, so we're going to give it a try here. It's loading. There we go. Yeah, you can hear it? Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's not that loud. Oh. All right, well, All right. that did it. Hopefully that's the only time I got to call you. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later. Yep. Bye. Seems like that solved our issue here on the control. You can see the drone going, and there we go with the drone turning around on the edge of the field. Just to charge these batteries, just got a plug here in the back. You pop this in on the battery. Takes right now since I'm on a 120 volt plug, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Eventually, I'll get a generator. These batteries are gonna charge just in nine, ten minutes.
And also because when they're hooked up to the generator, they're gonna charge so fast, you don't want the batteries to overheat. So they have these cooling stations that I need to mount to my trailer. This will actually push water through these cores in the battery. That way the batteries don't get overheated. So eventually what I'll do is just take the battery, push it into this cooling station. This portion will be filled with water and that'll push all the water through the battery and charge this in about nine minutes. Found the setting that I needed to take off manually. So now we're just pinching the two joysticks together like this. The propellers will start spinning and then just raise the left joystick and the drone will go right up. There we go. The first thing I'm figuring out when I'm flying it manually is which part of the drone is the front so I know which way I need to steer the drone using the sticks. I can tell this side's the front because that's where the radar is. Plus when you look at the camera, you can see that it's seeing us. So now if I move the joystick ahead, the drone will come right towards us. I figured out the manual method to use the drone. And in all honesty, about 99% of the time I'm gonna be spraying with this drone this summer. It's all gonna be autonomous anyway, so I'm really not worried about diving in more to what's gonna be a manual method with this thing. Power off the batteries. It's getting dark out. I do feel a little bit still overwhelmed just because this is a new piece of equipment that we got at the farm today. It's all my responsibility to get this thing up and figure it out because there's dad leaving right now with the truck. He, he honestly has no interest in this drone thing. I honestly think it's just an age gap thing. I, as a younger farmer, I find interest in this, in this sort of stuff. Him as an older farmer, I think he finds interest in it. Would he want to do it all the time? Probably not. So we'll get this thing put away and then I will show you one other cool feature that I learned about today for this drone. First time lifting my drone too. Oh, honestly, not that heavy. Here's all of our batteries, charging stations, cooling stations, and drone. Everything we got today, in total, all of this costs $42,000. Which is honestly why I'm trying to be as cost effective as possible on my spray drone trailer that I'm gonna be setting up, which now that we have the cooling station, the chargers, all the batteries, I'm gonna basically start to design and think of ways I'm gonna mount all of those to the trailer. So haven't started on the trailer. If you wanna see that process, I'd encourage you to hit subscribe because that's gonna be coming here very soon now that everything is here for the drone. I can show you on the computer, XAG has this platform, this online website similar to John Deere's, which is gonna make it really slick for me to spray all of our fields. I come in here to our John Deere account and I select that field that was behind that I already mapped with our gator. And I come up to boundaries. Here is the boundary. And if I go up here, I can export that and I can export it as a shapefile. With the shapefile downloaded, I then import that to XAG's online website. That then syncs over to the remote controller for the drone. So basically, what this saves me the hassle of, of going all around the outside picture frame edge of all the fields with the drone. That way the drone knows to spray in between. Now, using those shape files or those files from the John Deere side, now it has the exact same information. So it's gonna save me a lot of time and hassle from needing to fly the drone around the outside edge of the field when I go out to spray this summer. With the drone coming today, I do feel a bit relieved knowing that that is taken care of. I feel relieved that all of my exams to fly the drone for this summer are taken care of. Things I still gotta figure out. I still gotta figure out the trailer setup. I gotta get all the trailer things done. I also still need to get insurance because there is a lot of liability flying a drone out and about. So now that I have the drone, I'm gonna be getting liability insurance for the drone and for the business side of things. And honestly, I'm probably forgetting something that I need to do for the drone that'll come to my attention before that thing's ready to go. And honestly, it'll be probably Daniel from Tenacity that'll mention, hey Matthias, you get this done, which they've been a huge help for me I wouldn't be as far along in this drone process without them. So I'll include their link down below in the description if anybody's looking to purchase a drone for their farm. I strongly recommend them. And with that, that's it for today's video. I'm High Tech Farmer, thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya 
in the next one.